Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today I'm back in the laboratory in Southwest Florida. I've been spending a lot of time here <laughs> and, and today it's been a really long day uh, dealing with autoclave issues that I think resolved. It's running, should be okay, but um, we'll see how it goes. And I've been looking at um, I've been looking at orchid plants and cultures. I spent a long time washing dishes this morning. You know, they stack up. You got to take care of them. So that's what I've been doing uh, today. Uh, anyway, what I want to do today is share with you some results, some preliminary results that I have. So um, maybe uh, a couple of months, six weeks, a couple of months ago, I shared an idea with you about cloning some seedlings that were from that, that were rare in the capsules that I had obtained. So I occasionally what I have when I make crosses I get these capsules and they look like there are a lot of seed in there and there are but very few of the seed have embryos and are viable. So sometimes you get you know from half a million seed you will only get a, less than a handful that are viable. So what I thought at the time is, okay, let's, what if I can take the really rare seed that I recovered and, and clone them? And when the seed are really small, it's a good time to reach in there and rescue them and transfer to a me them to a medium that will then induce proliferation of that tissue. And so what I did is I set up a little experiment, uh, only two different media, but I wanted to try this with uh, some orchid seedlings that I had a lot of. I didn't want to sacrifice my rare seedlings on an experiment to see what I would get. And and so this has been, I gotta look, this has been, um, I guess, all right, this was seven weeks ago that I set this experiment up. So um, what I have is I'm starting to get some results in, and I, I just did a small scale experiment, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a good experiment. I had some medium, leftover from some soybean work that I was doing and it contained about the kind of growth regulators that I wanted to evaluate. You know, a lot of times when I'm in the laboratory, I do things because it's uh, it's easy. So if I have medium that's left over, media that I have that's left over from a previous experiment, I'll use that for something else. So I evaluated a few different media that contained two different levels of a, a cytokinin. Cytokinins are um, growth, re growth regulators hormones that are typically associated with multiplication. So I had two different levels of this cytokinin that was in this medium, again, that was developed more for soybeans. But, okay, I tried it on orchids and, and stuff happened, uh, which is what I wanted to see. So it, it kind of gave me an idea. And, and again, I tried two different levels and the responses that I got from the seedlings were very different. Um, you look to the literature and again, what people use is really a range of different growth regulators. It, it's really surprising how responsive orchid tissues are to these different growth regulators. And so, but what I wanted to do was just try something that I already had prepared. So I looked at my dishes today and, and the interesting thing is the lower level of the plant growth regulator that I use seemed to give the best response. And so I look in here at these, at these seedlings and what I get in a few cases, and, and I, so I transfer these young seedlings on here, and what you get in some cases is just uh, elongation of one of the eyes, one of the buds that's associated with a seedling. Sometimes you'll get, as I look in here, uh, sometimes you'll get a, where you'll have maybe multiple buds will form from the initial seedling. And what happens when you look at that, those, those eyes, those buds are at the base of those seedlings. So you can see here, um, uh, the bud here that is starting to expand a little bit, all right? And that's good, and that's what you want to see at an early time point. As I look around at some of the other seedlings on this dish, sometimes what you get is a proliferation of tissue, more tissue at the base of these seedlings, and that's really more 
what I'm looking for. So the proliferation of the tissue, this seems to be shoot forming tissue, and if you know what you're looking for, you can kind of see shoots um, that are within this mass of proliferating tissue called callus. And so that's nice, and that's what you're that's what you're looking for. And then if I transfer this tissue to another medium that doesn't have these growth regulators in them, I will get uh, development of the shoots that are buried in this callus mass. On some of the other seedlings, what you see is just a complete formation, proliferation of callus. So you can't even see the seedling anymore because it's either buried or the protocorm, the initial seedling when it was developing, just starts proliferating. And so you get a mass of tissue that appears to be shoot forming tissue. Now in, in orchid and many plants you can have shoots that form. You can have in orchids, you, ha you have these embryos that form and in orchids they're, they're protocorm, they're protocorm like bodies, PLDs that form. This is a medium that was that I expected to see more shoot formation and that's what I'm getting. Okay, what's the next step? I could just take this tissue and just subculture it, just transfer it to fresh medium and get more proliferation. I don't need to because the pieces of tissue are still very, very small. Um, but what I want to do is something a little different. <laughs> and so what I want to do is take this tissue and transfer it to a liquid medium. And the liquid medium that I have is right here. So this is medium that I have in these flasks. And I put just uh, 35 mils of liquid medium in the flask. It is the same medium as these, um, as these seedlings are growing in right now. And I'm just going to transfer them. Now, why do you do this? Well, my background is actually in <clears throat> proliferative cultures in liquid media. Uh, believe it or not, I have that area of expertise. Um, I focused on that for much of my career. So I can, I, I really know how to grow these liquid cultures, these suspension cultures, and I actually have a microscope that lets me see inside the flask in pretty good detail as far as what's going on. All right, again, why do you do this? Why do you grow in liquid medium? When you have the plant tissue that is growing on plates, as shown here, um, the medium that is supporting growth is just on the bottom, localized under the piece of tissue. When you transfer this tissue, into this liquid medium here, what happens now is you're bathing the tissue in this rich medium. And so you're gonna get really accelerated growth in these cultures. I also like using them because I can see what's going on. You get a really enhancement of growth rate when you're bathing these tissues and cells in a liquid medium. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do. It's not difficult to do this. And so I'll show you how you, how to do this. This really, there's no trick to it at all. So I'm going to take my instrument here. I need to find an appropriate piece of tissue right here. And so what I'm going to do is take this tissue and transfer it to the liquid medium. So that's, that's all there is to it. So that was one flask that was there. So I just put this um, here in this liquid medium and then I'll put it, I'll put this on, um, see, did it sink? Yeah, it's sunk, uh, which is fine. That's what, <laughs> that's what plant tissue does in these liquid media. Um, but what I'll do is I'll put this, you can't just let this sit. This goes on a shaker. And so I have a shaker and I'll add these to my shaker that contains the soybean tissue that I'm working on in the laboratory here. And I'm just going to do a really small scale experiment and evaluate just four pieces of tissue, each that's going to go in its different, different flask that I have uh, right here on the countertop. Let me, do, let me do another one for you. And so that first piece of tissue was a, just a proliferative mass of cells. So now I want to take this piece of tissue here. Okay, and that piece of tissue was a, um, was a seedling that had a mass of callus 
uh, at the base of it. And, and again, what I'm going to do again with these things, I'm going to try just, again, small scale until I figure out and get a little better idea of what's going on. And then I'll scale up a little bit. And again, this is, um, this is actually a cross that I made that I got plenty of seed of that I don't need them, but this is what I'm going to do this with. All right, why do you put these on the suspension cultures? These, are, these flasks are called uh, D-Long flasks. And they're nice because they've got these metal lids, they're glass. Uh, the other thing that's nice about these that I use them is they're, they're called, they're baffled. So at the flask, there are three points where the glass is bent up and what that allows when, when you're shaking, when, you're sh when this culture is shaking, it adds to aeration. You know, plant cells, um, if, they, if they go underneath water, even though this is green and they produce oxygen, they still need to be aerated for optimal growth. Um, so this helps in the, the baffling of these flasks, helps in the aeration of this tissue, in oxygenation of this tissue as well. Um, I will wrap the flasks here, but I'll also, there's, there's little um, holes that are in the lid here that I'll keep exposed, so we still get aeration. They're orchids, they like to be somewhat uh, aerated, Again, you don't aerate enough so that you get contamination of microbes go in, but these are, these are capped flasks that will be mostly sealed but still left open in case there's any gas buildup. It allows that gas to escape. Um, I'll just keep an eye on this. Again, what I'm hoping to see is much more rapid growth in the liquid culture than I have on plates. Again, just a small scale thing before I take some of my more valuable, unique seedlings that I have in the laboratory and try the same thing with them. All right, so this is, again, my first venture into cloning of rare orchids, even though these are not rare, but we're trying to clone them anyway. We're doing some, some we're playing and doing some things um, on orchids that I have plenty of. And again, I'll make the transition to um, my rare orchids once I figure out what's going on here. Um, all right, so that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you enjoy the video and you want to keep on seeing them or help me out, if you can click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. All right, that's all I have for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed it and happy propagating.